<laughs> All right. Um, can, I, can I tell you a little secret? I'm going to tell you. This is what church should be like. Amen. And, and maybe you, you say, well, I don't, I don't really agree. Well, I can tell you, this is, like, this is church like Jesus liked to do it. Amen. And we've been talking about, I mean, I've been teaching a, a series, Supernatural Lifestyle, for about two months now. And, and there's a lot of different diversities, prayer, there's prayer, there's, there's worship, there's so many things. But now I'm teaching on Revelation. Not the book of Revelation, but full revelation, full disclosure in God. And I want to talk to you a little bit today about Revelation, and I want to talk to you about the next season of your life. Where do I go from here? How many of, y'all, how many of you are delivered and filled with the Holy Ghost? All right, then you need, you need somewhere to go from there, right? Amen. And, and let, me, let me say this. You, you got... You got, you got to find yourself in Christ. Does that make sense? You got to find your niche in Christ. So let's go to Amos 9 and 13 in the New King James Version. I've been, I've been really liking this New King James Version. It's really good. And you may say, well, I like the KJV. That's good. You read that one. I like all of them. Amen. They're all good. They're all the Word of God. But Amos 9 and 13 says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows seed, the mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and the hills shall flow with it, right? So I don't know if it went, I don't think it went up there, but anyway. So, all right, you get it? You see right here? Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of the grapes, the one who sows seed. The mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and the hills shall flow with it. Let me explain that to you. So what that means is that, that the seasons, you know, we talked about seasons, Pastor Chris talked about seasons and stuff like that. Here's the thing, here's where we're running into now. That the seed in this time that we're living in this time, right? Are you in this time? I'm in this time, right? So we're living in a time now where the seasons don't matter. People say, "Well, I gotta have a dry season." Well, I gotta have a wet season. I gotta have I gotta have a moderate season. No, what's happening now in the kingdom of God is all the seasons are starting to blend together. Are you with me? Amen. So that means you can't have a dry service to, this morning and have a saturated service tonight. So. What happens is, in this season we're living in, that they're not going to seem so evident anymore, right? It's going to seem to overlap so that planting and harvesting will happen at the same time. So, let me tell you how good that is. I've seen that happen. That's why I got this message. Last week, I've seen people come in, lost, get saved, and filled with the Holy Ghost all at the same time. You know, some people say, oh, you got Terry. And ha- no, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen one day. God, when you have a true encounter with God, your life will change that day. Amen. I I can throw some seed right now, and by the end of the service, we'll get you filled with the Holy Ghost. We'll get you saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, it's it's up to you. It's by the measure of faith that you have is what you can receive here today. Because we all got the same faith. The faith of Christ, right? But it's how much you want and how much you pull out of me today is how much you're going to get, right? How much, you, I mean, it's how, how far you want to go. So, here it is. You're going to live a super, we will live in a supernatural season when understanding, we're living, and we're living in a supernatural season, right? Where knowledge and understanding is going to come more quickly, right? And it bears, for, it bears fruit more supernaturally. Let me explain. So, God's going to give you a word. You remember I told you the other day, you ask God something, He answers you. Most of y'all get scared when He answers you. But God gives you an answer, and see, we want, we, want, we want to dwell on it. We want to meditate on it. We want to try to shovel it around. You know, when God gives you something to do, you say yes, and then go let him do the rest. Here's what we do. We say maybe, and then we go try to figure out how to do it on our own, and then we get messed up. Amen. We let somebody talk us out of it. We let somebody say you can't do it. We let the finances get involved. We let somebody else get involved. But if, we, when God, if God says if God answers you and, and, and you say yes, then he has to do the rest. Does that make sense? So, we're living in a season, wouldn't you agree? That understanding, right? The understanding is coming more quickly. Right? Right? So, what is cool about that is, you can come here, I used to say give me three services, but you give me one now, and I believe that God can do everything he needs to do. Amen. That don't mean you can't come back, but you got to, you know what I'm saying. But we see, here it is. We see the knowledge of man is increasing drastically, is it not? I don't have a cell phone, but I got an iPad. When I started preaching um, in 1995, I had scrap paper, I had notes, sticky notes, 
I had papers blowing everywhere. Now I got this. So man's technology and, and man's technology in the world is exploding. Wouldn't you all not agree, right? We got places like, we got cell phones, we got internet giants, Walmart. When I, came, when I was growing up in the 70s, I never heard of Walmart. Some little place out in Arkansas, right? But what happened? This little man with a pickup truck, now it's the biggest industry in, in the whole that gun world, right? So we're seeing places and things change. So that's good news for some of you that may be in a bad season, <laughs> right? That you're going to come out of it. But we see Walmart, Apple, all these are multi-dollar businesses. But watch this. But don't think for a minute that God can't do equally greater for the church in all spiritual matters, right? So if, God is, if, if man is getting more knowledge, more wisdom, and more understanding of the worldly things, why, wouldn't it make sense that God would spiritually give man more understanding of spiritual things? I'm telling you, if you listen to me right now and you listen to this message today, you're going to have an encounter with God. Amen. But here's the thing. You're not going to have an encounter with God, amen, if you're not willing to answer yes when, he, when, he call, when you say, God, I need to be healed. Every, you know, I was telling the boys out there a while ago, everybody's got head knowledge. Everybody knows Scripture. James, where are you at, James? James went to a church the other day. Amen. They all know, they all got head knowledge. They all say the right things. But when it comes to putting that, that understand, that knowledge they got in their head to, to the test, they can't do it. No offense, brother. Amen. They can't, I'm just giving you his testimony, right? They can't do it because we got all the head knowledge. You ever known anybody in school that, man, they were like straight A students, but they have a lick of sense in the world? That wasn't me, I can tell you that, but Amen. But, but they have all this head knowledge, but they can't figure out how to buy a car. They can't figure out how to get a job. You know, you got all these little, uh, these, these dweeby guys sitting in their mama's basement playing on computers all day. They're 40 years old trying to figure out how to, how to get their way. They're way smarter than me and you, Tim. No offense. Amen. Amen. But guess what? They ain't got, they, but me and you could outwork them in a heartbeat. Probably make more money than both of them, right? Amen. But that's what I'm talking about. But God is doing the same thing in spiritual matters. I don't care where you're at today. You may say, oh, Bishop, you just throw in some seed today. Hey, we can plant it, we'll water it, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and cultivate it, then we'll harvest it before you get out of here today. How about that? He, but here it is. God is looking for men and women of creativity. Are you with me? He, he don't want the normal, whiny, woe is me, bye, 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 bye. Oh, whiny life, treat me this way. Oh, hush. When you have an understanding of who you are in Christ, you don't care what nobody does. You won't care what anybody does to you. Watch this. God is right now drawing people into an intimacy so that he knows, so that he even knows how we think and how we move, right? Amen. He wants to draw you in so that you can relate to him. And start, he, he, this is amazing. If you're so close to God, you can think like he thinks, right? And know what he knows. Oh, go ahead and get mad. You're blaspheming, bitch. I'll, hush, I'll prove it to you before we're done. So, God wants me in Tanzania, wherever that is. I don't even know where that is, but it's somewhere in Africa, right? And, 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 and he wants me there, right? And, and then God's got to provide a way to get there, right? So, I have an understanding where God needs me there because there's a child that's blind. Maybe I, I'm the only one. Maybe I got the prayer that needs to pray. You say, Bishop, that's a lot of work to go there and get one uh, blind person healed. Isn't that what it's all about? Amen? <laughs> Going to one place. Some guy, this guy right here with the baby. What's your name? Right? See the guy in gray? Yeah, Tim. Your name's Tim too? Praise the Lord, man. You got a great name. This guy here, I, I say, welcome to Living Way. He goes, hey, you're Tim, right? I was like, yeah, I'm Tim. You're Tim, right? And, and he says, you and Stacy invited us two years ago. I don't remember that. I don't, I, no offense, I don't remember it, but guess what? Amen. Hey, he's here today. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? See, that seed was planted. It got water. It took a little longer, but hey, he's here, right? So you, you see what I'm talking about. You know, you never know. It's in the go ye. It's not in, the, it, it's not in, the, in these four walls. Amen. I worship the building down here. I, I, I can lay down up here like y'all do. I can jump around. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost wherever I go. Amen. I know God. He knows me. Amen. And if you know God, he knows you. You got something going, right? Amen. So, people are coming alive to that drawing. You see it right now, right? And they're coming to that, that, into that process. It's kind of their sense of destiny. Don't you feel better than you did when you got here? Right? It's not about greatness or, or personal accomplishments, right? Of some person or a church. It's about the purposes of God, 
Everybody say purposes. So by the purposes of God being revealed in the earth. Amen. Who's going to reach those people in Kowal West? Who's going to reach those children over there? Who's going to reach the people that come in here today? Amen. If we say, oh, we got visitors today, let's tone it down a little bit. Who's going to reach them? Amen. Who's going to invite somebody if you don't invite them? Amen. You understand? We all have, we all got this head knowledge of the Word of God, but there ain't nobody doing the go ye stuff, right? Amen. So it's about the go ye, right? These ongoing revelations, you know, in, what is revelation? What did I teach you? It's disclosure, right? You know, you understand who you are. These ongoing disclosures, encounters with the power of God, you know what they do? They launch us into a place of understanding of things we never understood before. How many of you in the last six weeks, two months, three months, have launched into a place of understanding where you didn't know a few months ago? Amen. Me, I have. Amen. Really. You, it launches you because you're willing to do it. Amen. You don't let nobody, you don't let your husband, you don't let your wife, you don't let nobody hinder you from getting to work. Hey, if I know who I am in Christ Jesus, nothing else matters. You say, well, yeah, it does. It shouldn't. Because if you know who you are in Christ, everything else is going to fall in place. Amen. So your wife says, I don't want you going to church today. I'm going to church anyway. You can go with me. Hallelujah. Because I know who I am in Jesus. And Jesus is going to make it all. Jesus is so great, he's going to make it where you want to go to church. Amen. And I'm going to be positive. I'm going to speak positive. Because i got a full understanding of who I am in Christ. I know that people don't like me. But guess what? They didn't like Jesus either. Amen. Show me where Jesus was popular. He wasn't popular. Not especially in his own hometown. And especially with the religious people, right? But his understanding of who he was launched him into the king of kings and the lord of lords who he discovered who he was right so jeremiah 31 and 34 says this hallelujah no more shall every man teach his neighbor listen to this and every man his brother saying know the lord so for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them says the lord for i will forgive their iniquity in their sin I will remember no more. No more. See, we got to be a people. You see it up here? Amen. It says, no more shall every man just teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. Here's the problem. How many people, Clay, you ran into and says, you know, do you know Jesus? But when you go, yeah, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, they all run off. Amen. You understand? So it ain't about just saying, hey, you know, let me give you, let me give you one of these tracks and I, I'm going on my way. Now, give me more. I wish somebody would give me a track. I say, hey, come here. I want to know. I, I don't want to know. I, tell me what you know about Jesus. Tell me, tell me about your, your, your encounter with God. Ask, this week, I want you to ask somebody when they come up to you, you know, I don't do church. Well, you know what? Praise God. Let me tell you about my encounter with God. And if you haven't had an encounter with God, you need to have one today. My God, I'm going to tell you what, I've had some encounters that would, would shake the earth. You know, you, you feel like you're getting taken out of this place. I've told Doug, some of my armor bearers, hey, man, I think I'm about to get carried out of here, right? Amen. And if you say, I've never had that encounter, you know, we got to be a people of ongoing, right? You understand what I'm saying? We got to be a people of not quitting. We got people of, uh, say, we got people of, we got to be a people of, we're not going to back down, right? We're not going to quit. We're going to keep doing what we do, even though it may not seem like it's working. We got to be a people of ongoing, life changing revelation from God. Does that make sense? Okay. But here's the thing here's the thing. Just don't stop. Don't let it stop right there. Don't let, don't let your, your, your understanding stop right there. It's got, if you've got an understanding of God, how many, how many times have we seen the IBTC students go out and flake out? Why? You know what they did? They worried about, they didn't do the work, number one. Um, they cheated. I'm, 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 I'm helping. I don't know where I'm going. And, 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 and they got a certificate, but they didn't they have no encounter with God. You just wasted two years. Why did you cheat? Why, I'm not, I'm not, I'm why did you give in? If you didn't have an encounter with God, why did you do it? Why did you, if you didn't come to church today and you didn't have an encounter with God, let me go for it. If you woke up on Monday morning and you didn't have an encounter with God, why did you wake up? If you went to bed Monday night without an encounter with God, then why did you even go to bed? I wouldn't go to bed without an encounter with God. With God. You understand what I'm saying? But see, we, we look for a quick moment of encounter, amen, a quick satisfaction, and then we're going to go and do our thing. It don't work that way, right? So, you can't let it stop there. Your knowledge and your wisdom of God's Word, your wisdom and knowledge of who you are in Christ, must lead to, to, to like a direct hands-on 
experience to have any effect at all. Let's say, we're a missionary. We're a missionary church. We ain't never been out of Florida, though. I would tell you, you're a liar. Oh, we're going to help the homeless, but we never fed the homeless. Or, I got better for you. you want, James, you ready? The homeless people show up at your church and you run them off. But we're about helping the less fortunate as long as they don't come to our church. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know, that's head knowledge, but you ain't putting it to, you ain't putting it to work, right? Come on, right? Oh, we're going to worship God when we get to heaven, but you sit there and play on your phone during church. No, you ain't going to worship God in heaven because you don't even worship here in church. So I know you don't do it on Monday and Tuesday nights. Amen? You see what I'm talking about? If your church attendance and your church worship and your encounter with God does not lead you to a new, a new path and lead you to new places, in, then you ain't had an encounter. Well, I know John 3, 16. Oh, hush. I know Psalm 23. You wouldn't know. If I read it to you, it'd scare you. I, ran it. I learned it in Bible school. Well, good for you. What have you done with Bible school? Bible school's great, but you got to put it to work. Amen? How many? I'm going to stop. You see, the renewing of the mind is not just reading words on a page and having a moment. I'm tired of people having moments. And then I, they're like, Bishop, I'm ready to do whatever you want me to do. I say, I need you to go with me to the four corners of the earth. Except that. Because I don't have any money. I need you to go. Where do you want to go? California. No, I don't want to go there. It's too far. I don't know how I'm going to get there. You got to quit analyzing what God tells you to do. You just got to be in the go ye. I, my God, I went to Africa the first time, didn't know the pastor's name, didn't know where I was staying, didn't know who anybody was. I got questioned by security. I was like, oh my God, the only way I'm going to get in here is the Holy Ghost. Praise God, God got me in. Amen. Somehow the lady turned her head and I got my visa and went on. Praise the Lord, right? I didn't have no shots. I didn't know nothing about it, right? But I'm telling you right now, God will do that same thing for you when he tells you to go see somebody in the hospital, amen, or, or, or leave your husband or wife sitting at home and they don't want to go to church. And, and they say, well, are you going to cook dinner before you go? No, I'm going to go have an encounter with God and I'm going to the Waffle House. And the sandwich bread is in the pantry. So the renewing, y'all, I'm going to tell you, y'all say, well, i got to keep them happy. Now, you, know, you better keep God happy, then, then they'll be happy. I want God happy with me because a happy God communicates with me. Amen? If he's pleased with you, right? So you see the renewing of the mind is not just reading the words on the page. It's not passing a test, right? Which is good. Or having a moment of revelation about a verse or a service. Oh my God, God revealed everything about my life in that one service. Okay, that is awesome. But what in the world are you going to do with it? <laughs> I've been delivered, Bishop! Then I see them on Facebook, amen, they, they undelivered. <laughs> y'all think, some of y'all need to delete me. Because you people make it too easy to preach. In 1995, in 1995, I had to get it from somebody that's seen somebody that seen some, and you know that he was there. Whoa, yeah, whoa, okay. I had to get it now. Just y'all just put it out there and tag some of y'all. Y'all may even tag me sometimes. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> but here it is. Most churches, it's good enough for me to make y'all feel really good today, teach you a message, maybe tell a little bit about fire and brimstone, and, and ha, 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 you know, a little bit like that. And y'all go home, everybody's happy, right? It's not good enough for me. It's not good enough for God. It's not good enough unless you have an encounter with Him, amen? And if I come in here, I tell God, I say, God, I'm going to have an encounter with you, you know what I mean? We were up last time, me and her, she, I was in one seat, she was in one seat in the living room. It was like 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. Me and her, we were working on a message, praying in the Holy Ghost, believing God, seeking an encounter with God, amen? Instead of even going to bed ourselves on a Saturday, we could have been doing anything. But you know what? Thank God, because we sought God first, that these things added, were added into us. Amen. And we're out to have an encounter with God together. That, you say, well, my husband don't like church. My wife don't like church. You start loving God, and you start, you start getting a revelated mind, and you get a disclosure about who you are. He'll get so, 
He'll get so jealous of you and God, he'll show up. Boss, hey! That happened to me in my marriage. I was like, where are you going? Church. I was like, well, can't you stay here? No, I'm going to church. I'm taking Tyler to church. I was like, well, what am I going to do? I guess you'll sit here. What about lunch? You figure it out. Like, Hallelujah. I got jealous of God. I sure did. I was like, I'll show up. And the next thing you know, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. She's like, oh, my God, I don't know if I pray for all this stuff. You done got butt wild. But watch. Why would it be any different for her and me than it would be for you and your spouse? I mean, I'm not going to lie. She just said, shut up, I'm going to church, right? Basically, I'm going. Right? Hallelujah. You see, you got to do it. But just reading the words of the page and showing up, and so you could say you showed up at church, that's good enough for most people. It's not good enough for us. A few moments, here it is. I tell Pastor Lacey, people get a few moments and they're satisfied. We can't be satisfied, can we? Are you happy where you're at now? You want to go further, right? Amen. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not, let me say, it, it, it's, it's, it's not easy to be in the go ye. Does that make sense? It's not easy to put things to work that don't make no sense. I'll show you in a minute. So we can't have a few moments of feeling good and be satisfied. Half the equation won't cut it, right? Okay? So renewal comes as revelation or disclosure leads us into a new. Everybody say new. So, all right, watch this. Renewal, you know what I mean? Renew your mind comes as disclosure and leads us, me and you, into a what? New. Say new. Have you ever been to Africa? That'll be a new experience, will it not? Amen? It'll be new, right? Do you think that the Holy Ghost is the same in Africa as He is right here? He's the same in Israel as He is right here, right? Why? When you get there, can you go, yeah, yeah, yeah? Will it work there just like it works there? When you go, when they hear the high note and you go, hey! You don't think it's going to erupt? It will. I'm telling you right now, you'll discover who you are. Now, now watch this. Now watch this. Now she's taking understanding. This is understanding here because this is easy. And I'm taking understanding and I'm converting it to revelation. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm converting it. Now, we may have to force her to come home. So Tyler and Taylor, you better, you know, I don't know. <laughs> when she gets there, she's going to go, oh my God. You won't say it cost you. You won't say, why did I do it? You won't say anything. You won't say, I miss my kid. You won't say, I'm scared of being here. You won't say anything because you'll have a full revelation and encounter with God that will change your life forever. You'll say, oh God, that's worth that. Oh, I stayed up all night studying. Oh, it's worth it because I had an encounter with God. You understand what I'm talking about. So, here it is. Look at Matthew 9, 16 and 17. You, everybody's good? Can I have a few minutes? Okay. We good? 20 minutes, I'm out of here. They, they sung a while. It was okay. I ain't got nowhere else to do. Oh, I got, listen. I'm going to take a break for a minute. Probably. Tonight, we have Action Linda Jackson. Yeah. Giving her a testimony. But can I tell you a secret? We have a special guest speaker right after her tonight. And I promise you this, I would get in this house. Can I say it? Can I hear it? Amen. amen. You do not. Can I, can I tell you, can I say this? Do not miss tonight. Because I will be here. But praise God, I get to sit over there and cheer them on tonight. Linda's came so far, man. I'm so excited for her. But watch this. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, right? For the patch pulls away from the garment. And the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine in old wineskins. Or else the wineskins break. The wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. And he, see, that's what I'm talking about. If tonight, today, you got to have this encounter with God. you got to be a new vessel. Because everything we're pouring into you, if you just carry, if you're the same old, old, same old, same old, you go out here with the same attitude, the same thing when you get home, the same everything, amen. That new wine we poured in is going to make you bust. Yeah, you can't handle it. You can't handle it, right? So, you, here it is. 
But the new wine in the new wine skins, both are preserved. You see that? You see that? New, right? You understand? So I'm born again, Phil. I'm born again. Now I have an encounter with God. Amen. I've, I've did away with the old, and I've become all things have become new. Right? So I'm able to take it. You may get you may get some of it here, worshiping, taking notes, praying. But not, watch this. Listen to me. You, you taking somebody's taking notes, right? You listening? All right, right. You may get some of it here. You may get some of it in IBTC, right? But n listen to this. You better catch this. But nothing can compare to the experience of stepping out and experiencing it for yourself. I didn't get a one amen. I can tell you how the Holy Ghost is, how he made me feel. I can tell you what he makes me do. But till you do what? Step out, go to the... I prophesied over him, but he wished I didn't show up there tonight. Come here. This little tough biker guy right here. Come here. Has he come a long way? He's one of my best students in, I, in, in IBTC. I don't even know your grades, but I like your attitude. <laughs> so we're sitting there at night, and Pastor Joel's going, we need somebody, we need some help at the jail. Shit, that robocall. Ed my car. You know the word, don't you? Now go do something with it, amen? You, you ain't going to know what it's like till you experience what you've learned, right? There ain't no experience like experience, right? Praise God. So he's going to be preaching at the jail. It's in the go ye, brother. Go ye. <laughs> if they start fighting, just keep preaching. They do it here, they just, you just don't see it, right? Praise the Lord. They do, it, they, do it, they do it after church. Hallelujah. So watch this. But nothing can compare to that experience of stepping out and experiencing it for yourself. John 5 and 39 and 40 says, You search the Scriptures, for in them you think you, you, may, you, you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me, but you are not willing to come unto me that you may have life. That is, oh my God. Let me, let me, let me try to break this down. You search the scriptures. Y'all know Psalm 23, John 3, 16. Y'all probably know Mark 11, 23, 24 pretty well now, right? For in them you think. Everybody say think. You think you have eternal life. Because I, I, I read the book. I read the Bible. I know, I know what Psalm 23 is. I can quote it verbatim. Okay? Watch this. You think you have And these are they which testify me. Okay? But, what was it? But. Everybody say But. You're not willing to come to me that you may have life. Okay. You see it? Okay. I understand everything the Bible says, but God said, come unto me. What does come unto me mean? This is reasonable service right here. This is easy. Come unto me is in the go ye. Come unto me is putting, my, putting what God has given me into life experience, into in, in ministry. Not just in these four walls, but maybe in these four walls. But going in, the, he said, you may think you know me, but you don't really know me till you experience me. Are you with me? You think you know me because you read the Word. But he said, you really don't know me because you don't have an intimate relationship with me because you don't have a revelation, disclosure of who you are in Christ and how far I could take you if you're willing to go. <laughs> you got it? That's good. I'm telling you, that's deep. But I hope you catch it, right? So, but you're not willing... You're not willing to go on a mission trip. You're not willing to go teach the kids. You're not willing to leave your husband or wife at home. You're not willing to draw a line in the sand. You're not willing to love that guy that can that guy that condemned you. You know what I mean? He was a preacher, right? He probably knew all the scriptures, didn't he? He's quoting them at you, throwing scriptures at you, right? He had no idea about the love of Christ. He was a preacher on the street corner condemning her because she's wearing biker stuff. Oh my. So he knows what the scripture, because he was throwing it right, probably quoting it right. But he has no experience, he has no coming to me experience, right? Remember when Jesus seen Nathaniel underneath the tree, and he said, come unto me, and, and, and he came unto him, and he said, I knew you before you were even born. You remember that? You see what I'm talking about? But, but he had no idea who you are in Christ. He couldn't see the inside of you. What did you do? Through life experience and encounter with God, you said, I know who I am in Christ because you've had an encounter with God and it don't matter what he says because you know, you know he ain't got no experience like you got. You've probably been preaching, probably been preaching, preaching 20 years and has no clue, right? So, you got it? So this says clearly, this verse, that revelation is meant to bring us into an encounter with God. 
Are you with me? I got, okay, I, I figured it. Okay, I had a, I read this verse. If you ever read a verse and you just had an encounter, it, it, brings you, it brings you into an encounter. But if it does it, okay, it only makes us more religious. I show up church today. I lifted my hands up, but I really didn't feel nothing, didn't do nothing, didn't have an encounter with God. All you are is religious. You went with everybody. Anybody can raise your hands. But let me verify that you really got what you say you got. That's what God's saying. Let me validate you. I went and got my parking validated last night. You go, you get it validated, you put it in there, and it's free, right? I want to validate. God wants to validate. Okay, we 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 going to shout in heaven. You never shout here. We're going to love one another as Christ loves us. You don't love people here, you, you judge her. Read that. People love quoting judge not lest you be judged. Because if you judge somebody, judgment's coming back on you, right? Hallelujah. So that dude's probably sitting at home going, why is everything going wrong in my life? He better repent what he said to hurry, man. Have an encounter with God and go apologize. You know what it is? It's in accountability, right? David was the man after God's own heart, right? He had encounters with God. He messed up all the time, but he would go re-encounter God, right? Amen. And Saul, his nemesis, didn't have near as many mistakes as David had. But guess what? David was a man after God's own heart. Why? So many, how many of y'all made mistakes? I'll raise both my hands. Okay. And you feel like, oh, I can't have an encounter no more. Why not? David did. What about Paul? Saul? He had an encounter, didn't he? He wrote most of the New Testament books, right? Did he not? Why can't you have an encounter? Why don't you repent, turn, right? Have an experience with God. Have an encounter with God today. You know, re re revelate your mind, amen, and so that you can experience who God really is in your life. And don't back down. If you really, here's why you don't get to where you want to go. Because you got head knowledge, and you're like, you know, I've tried everything else, and, and I've tried God, and it just don't work. It don't work because you're not having an encounter with Him. Does that make sense? You're not experiencing what it is. It's like, I can tell y'all, you know, you know what I'm saying? I can tell you I'm a rock star, but if you give me a guitar, I can't play it. Right? Remember I told you that story? Somebody did that to me one time. Out there school, I said, yeah, I can jam on guitar. Man. I, I could on the air guitar. Right? So one time I was at this party or something, I don't remember what it was, in high school, and the guy said, hey, I got my guitar. Like, oh, geez. I couldn't play it. I can guarantee you, most of you put to the test, don't, don't get mad, if I said, hey, here's what God's telling me to do, and he's telling me to, you to go with me, or you to do this with me, what would happen? Huh? You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. You could, but you won't. Why? Because you're not seeking an encounter with God. Why? Because you don't really have an intimate relationship with him. Right? You have a head knowledge of him. You have a religious outlook on him, but you don't have a supernatural. Let me tell you. If you're married to your wife, you know everything about your husband and wife, right? Intimately. You probably know where their mole is on their toe. Right? Hallelujah. You don't have one, honey. I, I probably got one. I'm not sure. But you know everything about them. But how, most of y'all don't know nothing about God. Why don't you have an intimate relationship with him? You know you should know everything about him. Amen? You should have a, you should have a full disclosure of who you are. You should also should have a full disclosure of who he is right that's a problem right and that's why people die go to hell they miss their destiny because they try to please their husband please their wife please their children please their church you know why a lot of preachers are like that because they got to please the people in the church thank god i don't have to please y'all you know if y'all mad at me so what i ain't going nowhere amen <laughs> be mad all you want amen but watch this can I tell you something? Revelation is never given to increase our head knowledge, right? So we know that knowledge is, is certainly a byproduct. We know that when you have an encounter, right? But most of us are so smart in biblical things that we could drown in all the information, right? Couldn't you? I believe that. You know, and, and a lot of these scholars, even when I was in Israel, my guide, he was a Jew. He didn't believe in the Holy Ghost or any of that kind of stuff. He knew every scripture of the New Testament. He knew every scripture. He could quote it verbatim. He, would, he wore me out with scriptures. I got tired of messing with him, right? Amen. So finally I just said, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? He shut up. He looked like I had horns coming out of my head. He knew everything about the Holy Ghost. He knew everything about Pentecost. He knew everything about everything, er everything, right? All he had was head knowledge of what they taught him in school and taught him in Jewish school and taught him all this kind of stuff. He had endless amount of evidence uh, of knowledge, right? But when I asked him, I said, you been filled with the Holy Ghost? He looked at me like, ha, ha, you always say that. That's what you always say, 
I said, yeah, you don't have it. You know what happens? They look at you crazy. What you do? You shut up. You didn't say anything else. To renew the mind, we, we, we've got to not just think differently. Listen to this. Some of you people, you can't just think differently. You've got to live differently. You, you can't be scared. Of Fear has no place in, 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 in an encounter with God. Are you with me? Fear has no place. Does that make sense? I'm not really sure if I want to go up there. You know, I might fall out in the spirit. Well, God bless you. I, you know what I mean? You know, is that so bad? What's so bad? Y'all don't mind going getting buck wild at a ball game. And some of y'all don't mind getting buck wild at clubs because I've seen pictures. <laughs> All up in the house with your clothes. So come in here and get up in the house. If y'all put as much effort in the house of God and being in, in the kingdom of God and identifying yourself with Christ and start identifying yourself with Christ, you would turn up the world. And can I tell you something? Your little turn up at the club ain't going to mean nothing in a year from now. It ain't. Praise God. It ain't going to mean nothing. We need to take some of them robes to the clubs. Y'all catch that later. The new experience, this new experience that, you're gonna, that you have, it, it equals the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, right? Matthew 13, 19 says this. I'm almost done. Y'all, just give me a minute. All right? Matthew 13, 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, are you listening? And does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and what? Snatches it away, which was sown in his heart. This is he who received the seed by the wayside. All right, watch this. The revelation of the kingdom is like a living seed with endless possibilities, right? So when you hear the word and don't understand it, the enemy has an open access to snatch it away. Does that make sense? So understanding is an experience. Are you with me? So this means we've got to practice in real life what we have come to know by revelation. We're going to go change the world. Well, you're not going to change the world in Porto, though. I'm going to change the earth. You better go somewhere. I'm going to have an impact wherever I go. Well, you better start doing it. Did you buy somebody's groceries yesterday that was in front of you? God told you to buy their groceries. You do that? That's having an impact. That's doing differently. That's having an encounter with God, right? Hallelujah. I scared a lady one time. Pastor Stacey said, you scared that woman half to death. Let's pay for her groceries. I was walking say, She goes, oh, this can't be so. She thought, she thought there were some strings attached. There, there, is, there is no strings attached to the benefits of the kingdom of God. All right? So, you got to practice in real life what you come to know by revelation. The Jewish leaders knew this when they said this in John 3 and 2. This man came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, no, we know that you are a teacher come from God. What? Now, let me ask you something. How did they know he was a teacher? It's up there probably. But <laughs> no, it ain't yet. Praise the Lord. I can answer you. How did he know he was a teacher sent from God? For no one can do these signs unless God is with them. So, not only did he say it, he did it, right? We don't, have, we don't have faith because we understand it. We understand because we have faith. Does that make sense? Right? So, in other words, it's, it's so important that we accept and understand things without our mind completely understanding. Does that make sense? Bishop, let's go change the world. Let's go somewhere. You don't understand it, but you know you got to go. Right? I've had people like, oh, no. I remember Bishop Bruton like, I ain't trusting Bishop Bruton. You need to go with me. Amen. He was Pastor Bruton at the time. He goes, I don't know. So I'm just telling you, I'll leave it with you. Do what you got to do with it, right? And, and he ended up going and having an encounter with God like he never had before, right? So it's the same thing. You know, you go out. When I told Pastor Joel when he was sitting over in the warehouse, I said, you're going to be my outreach minister. He's like, looking at me like, crazy. Look at the impact. Look at the impact that they're having in people's lives. Look at the impact they've had in people's lives. He could have said, I'm an outreach minister. But if they never went out and did outreach, I just had to say he was lying. But how many churches say, let's take care of the less fortunate? And they never do anything. Does that make sense? You see what I'm talking about? So when you have an encounter with God, you have a revelation who you are in Christ, you'll be in, in, in the work part amen, of the encounter. Does that make sense? So I'm almost done. Biblical learning takes place in the spirit first, right? So that, so, so that we can relate and understand, right? But understanding is not required for obedience. Bishop, you want me to do what? You don't have to understand it. Just go. God says, go, just go. Watch this. You want to write this. Un understanding releases and unfolds the experience. And here we go. You want to write this down. Revelation 
only takes you halfway there. Write it down. Revelation only takes you halfway there. Are you ready? I know who I am in Christ. Revelation takes me where? How far? Halfway. But watch this. Experience leads you the whole way. That's everything. Revelation only takes you halfway there. I'm a graduate of Bible college. Great. I'm glad you are. Now go do something with it. We trained you to go teach in the world. We trained you to go, we trained you to go into the highways and the byways and the hedges. In India. We got IBTC in the Congo. We got IBTC in India. I'm praying we're going to have IBTC, IBTC in, in Kowa West in this September. Right? And, and I'm in my final bit and I'm gone. We tend to think of heaven as a place in outer space. Right? Right? Because that's what God's way up there. Instead of a place that we should coexist with God on this earth. Right? Instead of a place that coexists with us. Shouldn't we function as ambassadors of another world? Right? We should be ambassadors of heaven on this earth. Are you with me? Living in faith, which is living in the spirit, which is called kingdom. Here's the problem. Sadly, and for most of us, we won't realize that we can demand that the truth become an experience. Revelation should change your heart before you can ever explain what you've learned. Revelation should change my heart before I even have an understanding of who I am. You know, does that make sense? I'm going. I don't know what I'm going to get, but I'm getting it. Amen. I'm going to pour to death, start me a use of uh, compassion and action. I don't understand it. It's going to take a lot of work, but praise God. I'm in the go ye. I'm in outreach. I'm going to go do it. Amen. Hallelujah. I need a new sanctuary because this one's about full, right? I'm in the go ye. I'm believing God's going to pay the mortgage off. Hey, I don't know how, but I believe it because I got a revelation of who I am in Christ, and I believe it. I'm going to tell you, God's going to pay this mortgage off. I just got that in the Holy Ghost. So then go build a new one. I'm tired of waiting on y'all. I'm just going to go build it. Amen. Amen. I told him Wednesday night, y'all too comfortable in here. So I said, and I said, I'm tired of this place. I was like, I can't. Now, if I didn't have a revelation of who I was in Christ and encounter with God, I would never say that, would I? Because it's got air conditioning, it's got pretty paint, it's got nice lights, it's got a great sound, stage looks pretty cool, right? Everything's got, got graphics up here. But I'm tired of this place. Because... And here's what I'm trying to say. I'm tired of the place I'm in right now. You should be the same way. I'm not content. If you get content here, we'll be just like all these other churches up and down the road. They've been here 150 years, still got the same amount of people in and less. Right? But what if we have an encounter? What if we got a church in Kauai West? What if we got one in North Africa, South Africa? Amen? What if we got one in Israel? I mean, how, why not us? Why can't we shift the earth? If we have a revelation, an encounter with God, who we are in Christ, and it's in the go ye, why can't we submit to God, amen, and let everything else fall into place? Cast every care upon him because he loves me, he cares for me, and why should I worry? Because he ain't worried, so why am I worried? Amen? You people come here heavy burden because y'all got problems. What problems do you have? God's got this messed up earth, amen. And he's the listen, he's got a messed up earth, and your little bitty problem ain't no problem to God. Get mad, I don't care. He expects you to be a big girl and a big boy and belly up to the bar, so to speak, amen, and go out and do his business. And then all your little petty problems will go away. I'm scared. Oh shush. You got the money. You ain't got the money because you don't, nah, I ain't going to get there. You don't tithe. You don't give. You will, let me tell you something. You will never pay your bills till you learn how to give. All right, it's 1230. Come sing a song. Amen. Let's get a song. Let's go. Praise the Lord. Just as I am, we all go home. We're all happy, right? <laughs> just as I am when I got here, just as I am when I leave. No, you better not be that way. You better have an encounter with God. You better understand who you are in Christ. And listen, listen to me, everybody. Listen to this. This is not just going on a mission trip. This is not just, you can do these things, amen. You can have an encounter with God and experience who you are in Christ by going out and do these things today. Take what you know. Take your experience from God. You've done it not long ago. You come to me and say, I'm doing this because God told me to do it, amen. I don't even know why I'm doing it, but I'm doing it because I believe in God and I believe in the power. And now your whole family getting delivered. Even your buddy's getting delivered, right? Amen. You don't know it, but you had an encounter. It, it, was not, it wasn't something you probably wanted to do in the flesh, but through the encounter with God, you did what God told you to do. Amen? And you further the kingdom of God when you do that. Right? It wasn't easy for you to drive 
ever how far you were driving when you first came here? But you had an encounter and you wanted to see you want to see it through, right? It's in the go ye. It's not in the quitting. It's not in the stopping. But right now, while we sing, while the altar's open, if you need prayer today, say, Bishop, I just want to I just want to start over. I'm just ready to start over who I am. I'm ready to pray for my husband, pray for my wife, pray for my children. 